It's good to be with you. Welcome to Class Outside. Today, we're going to learn how to bake material maps. Material maps let you add more than just color to your mesh. They affect how light and reflections interact with your object. They help it appear less flat and can provide the appearance of depth and shadow to the surface of a flat mesh. Usually, these materials are referred to as PBRs, or materials with physically based rendering. PBR basically means materials that express how light physically interacts with objects. To make material maps, we will need a textured 3D model. I will be using this axe by Ol Gunnar Isagar on Sketchfab. We will also need 3D modeling software. I will be using the free tool Blender. We will need the materialized software tool to help with some of our texture creation. I left links to the Axe, GIMP, and Materialize software tool down in the description. After you've installed the software and downloaded your mesh, open Blender and import it. Open up the shader editor in one of the panels. See if there is a node attached to the base color value on the path to the output. Take note of what that name is. Now, we need to save that image. Open a UV editor panel. Click the image selection dropdown, locate and select the image we saw on the previous panel. Click image and save as. Save this somewhere you will remember. We will be collecting a few image files throughout this video. I'd also recommend naming this image with diffuse at the end. When we add more images, it will be helpful to know which is which. For the next step, you should have the materialized tool mentioned earlier downloaded and extracted from the zipped file. First, we need to import our color, or diffuse map. In the diffuse map section, click O for open. Navigate to the image file we have saved and select it. Now, we should see the create button under height map is no longer gray and therefore can be selected. Height maps or displacement maps let you add information about the bigger changes in elevation on the mesh's texture. Displacement maps are useful to display bigger changes in the surface and even affect the geometry. These changes may require a lot of considerations, which may be discussed at a later time. Click the Create button under Height Map. Height maps use black, white, and gray colors. Pure white represents the highest point, and pure black represents the lowest point of an object. Use the sliders to adjust the image until the details of our object are well defined. A helpful button for this is the Details preset. Lower the final contrast, seeing as our axe shouldn't have vast differences in height on the surface. Once satisfied, click Set as Height Map. Materialize seems to use the height map data in order to generate the normal map. If you'd prefer a less detailed height map, you can go back and edit the height map once your normal map is complete. Now we can create our normal map. Click Create on Normal Map. Normal maps or bump maps let you add information about the smaller changes in elevation on the mesh's texture. The map is made of red, green, and blue colors. Each color, red, green, and blue, correspond to a coordinate, X, Y, and Z. These are used to fake small bumps and details when lighting interacts with an object. You can adjust the pre-contrast slider until you see the fine details appear in the contrasting colors. Once you're satisfied, select Set as Normal Map. Metallic maps are used to denote the type of reflections the texture should have. The darker the color, the less metal or reflective the material will be. The lighter the color, the more metal or reflective the surface will appear. I would picture the axe head appearing more metal than the wooden handles. We can use the Pick Color button and select somewhere where the wood is. Then, using the various sliders, adjust them in an attempt to set the metal handle to white and the wood to black. When most of the metal parts are white and most of the non-metal parts are black, select Set as Metallic. Before going any further, we can see how our map looks. Click the Show Full Material button. The material includes all of the available maps. You can rotate the box by holding down the right mouse button and dragging. This shows us how our material will look with the map supplied. We can see it's no longer completely flat. That's from the height map. We can see how smaller details like bumps and cracks are affected by light. That's thanks to the normal map. The metallic map affects how the light blooms and blurs across the surface. You can see these changes by clearing the map and pressing show full material. When you want the map back, just click create and set the map. Now, let's create our smoothness map. 
A smoothness map has a few names, smoothness, roughness, or glossiness map. Whichever name it has, this map lets us describe the level of smoothness throughout our texture, and this impacts how light will interact with that area. This also affects reflections, similar to the metallic map. The darker the value, the more matte or rough the surface. The brighter the value, the more smooth and shiny the surface. Seeing as the wood in Metal Axe was all likely once smooth and has grown rugged through use, I would think this should fall somewhere in the gray category, not completely smooth, but not completely rough. Edge maps are useful for defining the sharp transitions or edges between different materials or surfaces. It can additionally be used for effects down the line, such as adding a worn or weathered look to your texture. Black represents no edge information. White represents the strongest edge information. The most important part is to make sure the edges you're aware of appear in the texture. I chose the default setting, then adjusted the pinch until I saw the primary edges of the image. The contrast or difference between brightest and darkest values is used to tell how sharp the edge is. Here, I adjusted the contrast so that it's pretty low as there aren't many sharp edges. Then, I adjusted the final bias to somewhere in the gray. Now, we can set this as our edge map. Ambient occlusion is a technique used in computer graphics to create the illusion of shadowing and depth on objects, often in its crevices. It works by simulating the way that objects in the real world block or scatter light. For example, a crevice between two rocks might be darker than the surrounding areas because it's not receiving as much light. In our map, the darker the color, the more shadowed the spot should be. The lighter the color, the less shadowed the spot should appear. Again, without much depth to our object, the contrast here should be pretty low. Let's keep an eye on the indent on the axe head as it seems to be our darkest spot. If we go to show full material, we can see that there is an ambient occlusion power slider. We can adjust this to see how, if our map was weaker or stronger in ambient occlusion, how that would translate to the shadow appearing inside the indent of our axe's head. With that complete, it's time to save our materials. Go over to the Saving Options button. I'll choose to save these as .png. Click Save Project. Navigate to the folder you would like to save to and give your files a common name. Materialize will add the type of map they are to the end of each file. In this case, I'll name it Fire underscore Axe. Now, if we open that folder, we should see that it now contains all of the maps we just made and another file. This file can be opened in Materialize to go right back where the project was when you saved. Blender has a built-in add-on that provides some useful shortcuts called Node Wrangler. We will want to turn this on to make setting up our textures easy. Click on Edit, then go to Preferences. Click the Add-ons tab. Search for Node Wrangler. Click the checkbox. Now, Node Wrangler is turned on. Do remember, settings return to their defaults when you start a new Blender scene, and then you may not have Node Wrangler activated. There are ways to configure the default settings. Perhaps I'll have a video on this someday. Now, it's time to set up our material in Blender. Select the mesh we desire to change materials for. Go to the Material Properties menu. Remove the current material using the minus sign. Press the New button. Now, open a shader panel. We should see two nodes, a principled BSDF node and a material output node. Left click on the principled BSDF node to select it. Then press the following keys all at once, Control, Shift, and the letter T. Now, navigate to the folder you saved the maps to. You can shift and click to select each of the maps we made. Because the maps are properly named ending in smoothness, normal, metallic, and so on, Blender's Node Wrangler will be smart enough to set these up for us. When you have all maps selected, click Principal Texture Setup. This will automatically import and connect most of the textures we built in Materialize. We can see Diffuse goes into Base Color and Metallic into Metallic. Then, we notice both Normal and Height maps have a node between them and the output. Normal goes first into a Normal Map node, which takes the colors from the Normal Map image we made and further translate that into something that Blender can work with. Height map first goes into a displacement node, which takes the values from the height map image we made and further translates that into something that Blender can understand. If we go 
all the way up, we'll notice our ambient occlusion map is not connected. To hook up our ambient occlusion map, press shift in the letter A. Go to color and click mix RGB or mix color, depending on your blender version. Change the type from mix to multiply. Connect the diffuse to the first input and the ambient occlusion to the second. Connect the output of the mix color to the base color of the principled BSDF. It seems like the Node Wrangler didn't recognize our smoothness map. Let's resolve this by adding an image texture and opening the smoothness map we made. Afterwards, press Shift and the letter A, go to Color, and select Invert. Plug our smoothness into this Invert node and connect it to the Roughness section. This Invert node gives us a FAC, or Factor Slider. We can adjust the smoothness later to our liking. Let's add a light to our scene. Click Shift, the letter A, and hover over Light, and select Point Light. This makes a light glow over an area. Move the light over the head of our axe. I find the G key to move and the direction keys X, Y, or Z to be helpful when repositioning lights. I would also recommend upgrading the brightness. Click the little light bulb menu and up the power. For me, 1704 seemed to be bright enough to showcase the details. Now, let's look at our model. Go to Render Properties, or the little camera, and then click Render Engine, and choose Cycles. Now, click the Viewport Shading view. There is quite a difference already. However, it, this doesn't look exactly like it did in Materialize, and it might not. Different 3D software tends to use different rendering engines, or math, to figure out how things like textures and light should look to the viewer. A material may look one way in Materialize, another in Blender, and another in Unreal Engine. What is good is that the data we import that we set up in Materialize will be the same data wherever we go, and we can adjust it from there. If we play with our normal map strength, and the factor on our smoothness map, we can see the changes that take place in our scene. That is starting to look a lot better. You may also notice that the height isn't actually being displaced by the height map. For the height map to displace the mesh, modifications to the mesh need to occur. Perhaps I'll have another video on that someday. Let's look at some comparison shots from the original material and the one we set up in this video. Remember, not every project will require every map and some may only require the original color texture. Look at that. Together, we have learned how to bake material maps. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Have a great day, and thank you for attending class outside.